Ladies and gentlemen, the NBA 2K23 My Player Builder is officially here. As you guys know, I was invited to the NBA 2K23 Community Day event where I was lucky enough to play the game early. What you guys are looking at right here is the same My Player Builder that we are all going to be using when NBA 2K23 drops officially on September the 9th. I do need to warn you guys in advance though, and I said this in my community day vlog, that this is by far the most complex My Player Builder that I have ever had to use. In this video, I'm gonna try my best to break down the My Player Builder to the best of my ability, and also present to you guys what is going to be the best and most broken God build and the game and I'm not just saying this to get clicks or views I literally spent countless hours sitting through the my player builder Attempting to find the perfect build we got given around eight hours of community day to play the game with three limited features The Jordan challenge quick play and the my player builder But I spent all of my time on the my player builder alone like I said this my player builder is the most complex I have ever seen and you guys will soon understand that once you attempt to make your own builds on September 9th but for now I'm here to help you guys out. Just make sure that you guys are paying close attention because there are many key points and changes that 2K have implemented within this new builder. Before I show you my build, it's first crucial that I introduce you guys to the importance of badge count this year. The 2K23 My Player Builder features a completely new badge tier system. Badges are now separated from tier one, tier two, and tier three. Each badge is basically categorized depending on how good and how effective a badge is. Tier one badges are gonna cost you less badge points, while tier threes are going to cost you the most. And one important aspect to note about this is that before you can even start acquiring tier three badges, you must have a total of 10 badge points attributed towards tier one and tier two badges. I know this might sound really confusing at first, but trust me, it will make sense soon. But the most important thing to take away from this is that this year you really have to calculate your total badge count to be able to have enough for the right badges that you want and also have the best tiers. Obviously, you're gonna want to have as much tier three badges as possible since they're gonna be the best badges to have in the game. And also another big new addition to the badge system is the introduction of this thing called core badges. Core badges are essentially a free badge that you get for your my player. You get one core badge per badge category. So one for finishing, one for shooting, one for playmaking, and one for defending. However, this doesn't mean that you can just get any badge from any category for free. It doesn't just work like that. Before you can unlock a badge as a core badge, you must have enough badge points to actually be able to unlock that badge. Once again, this probably sounds confusing to you, but trust me, it is very simple once I give you this example. I put on Bronze Acrobat, which is a tier two badge, and it cost me three points. After that, I've only got five badge points remaining. However, the cost for a silver tier three badge is six points. So meaning since I've only got five points remaining, I need to take away one badge point, which is in this case, a single bronze tier one badge. So I take out Aerial Wizard, and then suddenly I've got six badge points. And now that I can actually afford Limitless Takeoff Silver, I can now make that into a core badge. So as soon as you make that into so a core badge, it doesn't actually take away those six points. Because remember, like I said, a core badge is a free badge that you can use without actually deducting your points. You basically just need to have a high enough badge count to be able to unlock it. So I make Limitless Takeoff Silver in my core badge. And after that, I still have that six points remaining. And now I'm able to get another silver tier three badge, which is Slithery. Obviously, if you're going to get a badge for free to take advantage of this the most and to be able to utilize it, you're going to want to have enough badge points to get a tier three badge as a core badge. So after demonstrating to you guys this new badge system, I want to again stress out to each and every one of you just how important your badge count is this year. You don't want to be left in a position where you don't have enough tier three badges. And you also don't really want to have a build where you're only one badge point short from unlocking a core badge at tier three. This was a big reason as to why it literally took me hours to find the perfect build since it was really a struggle to find the perfect badge count. But lucky for you guys, I already did all that work for you. So you won't have to go through what I did because I'm going to show you guys exactly how to break this builder system and you guys will not believe what you're about to see. Very quickly though, before we carry on with my build, I just wanna quickly highlight another complication of this builder system, particularly with guards. This year, for you to get Hall of Fame Limitless, you need to have a 99 three-point. Also, if you wanna have Hall of Fame handles for days, you need a 99 ball handle. Obviously, these are both crucial badges that have been around for a long time. If you wanna be able to succeed as a good guard, you're gonna to wanna to have these badges, but realistically though, 
This new build system has been designed so you practically cannot have both of these stats at 99. Doing so will only result in you not having any points left over for any other attributes and will also result in you having an extremely low badge count. And even just having one of these attributes at 99 immediately disadvantages and limits the other attributes that you can have. Honestly, I spent so many hours trying to achieve this and trust me, it is literally impossible and not worth it at all. Which by the way, I think this is a huge thing that 2K has done because it should definitely balance out a lot of the builds in the game. But now that you guys have a better understanding of the 2K23 My Player Builder, I'm going to stop dragging this out and now I am going to show you guys the best way to work around it and finally show you guys exactly how I was able to break the builder. So here is my official guard build for NBA 2K23. You're gonna start off by making a point guard. The height that you want is six foot one, wingspan also six foot one, body shape compact. And this right here, this is the part I know is gonna be very hard to believe. This is the part right here that breaks the builder. All my years of playing 2K almost every guard goes for the lightest weight. It grants you more speed and acceleration and just makes it easier for you to work around your defenders. This year, the tables have turned because you're actually going to want to make your guard max weight. I know it sounds silly and all, but just continue watching and trust me. And to give you guys some quick reassurance, take a look at this. Oh, this yeah. build system is right in my head right now. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Oh, yeah. It's impossible to have like 99, like a high three and a yeah, high yeah, four. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. It's impossible. Yeah. Yeah. It's literally impossible. Yeah, it I, figured, I figured out, figured out. You, you pretty much, you, you can't you gotta have mess like with a, the weight. Really? The what? If you want to get more badges, you gotta mess with the weight. All this time at community day, I was struggling so bad to find the perfect build. But then moments after that, that was when I realized that playing with the weight of your build was gonna be the factor that would eventually help me find the perfect build. I'm sure you guys know who Fanta is. He's been one of the best guards on 2K for a long time now, and he's also a 2K league player. But shout out to him and my guy Chance, who was actually the one that first found this breakthrough. And they both told me to keep this low key at community day because I don't don't think anybody else was able to discover this. Anyway, I was only actually able to test this with the guards, but as far as I know, from the few people that knew about this at Community Day, this works for a majority of other builds as well. And I know you guys are all thinking, oh, if I go max weight, my guard is gonna be too slow, I won't be able to move around the court, but just wait and see. Your physicals, such as your speed and acceleration, etc., isn't actually completely tied up to your weight this year. You can be a max weight guard and still have the same speed and acceleration as a minimum weight guard. Because at the end of the day, your physicals are determined with how you spread out your attribute points. The weight you choose for your my player only changes the amount of attribute points that you actually get and the cap for these physicals. But here's the thing. The issue with this is, even when you have a higher cap for speed and acceleration, if you decide to be a lighter guard, say if you went for minimum weight, you actually won't even have enough points to take advantage of this. Purely because of how they designed the My Player Builder this year. You guys will better understand this once you actually try and make your own builds. But if you were to choose an extremely high attribute like speed or acceleration, for example, you won't have enough points left over to evenly distribute with playmaking and shooting. And chances are your batch count is going to be very low. This is similar to what I told you guys earlier, that if you chose to have a 99.3, or a 99 ball handle, it just completely messes up your leftover points and it's going to negatively impact the rest of your attributes simply because you won't be able to upgrade them. So this year, to be able to get through this, to get the most attribute points, which also leads to a higher badge count, you're gonna have to go with max weight. And these are the attributes that you guys are going to want to have. 56 close shot, 74 driving layup, 84 driving dunk, 86 mid-range, 93 three-point, 71 free throw, 70 pass accuracy, 94 ball handle, 94 speed with ball. Defense, you're barely gonna touch. Obviously, this is going to be a threes build. 99% of the time, you'll only be gone in the corner anyway. For all you twos players out there, don't you guys worry, there will be another build in the same video at the very end, but it also uses the same method, and it is definitely going to be a broken build, so stay around for that if you guys wanna see that. But moving on for this build, you have a 90 speed, 86 acceleration, 70 vertical and 94 stamina. We have 16 at finishing, 28 at shooting, 26 playmaking and four defensive badges. This right here is by far the best badge layout that I have seen for a guard build that you can use on the threes. And yes, this build is essentially going to be a play shot 
that can also take it to the rim, take advantage of open lanes, and be able to effectively space the floor. Like I said earlier, it was pretty much impossible to have a high playmaking and high shooting at the same time. But with this build, we somehow found a way to bypass that. And yes, I know what you guys are probably thinking. If you look at the tier three badges, there are no Hall of Fame badges there at all. But the thing is this, if you want to have limitless Hall of Fame, you need a 99 three point. And if you want to have handles for days Hall of Fame, you need a 99 ball handle, which by the way, you can only get at six foot. But like I mentioned earlier, having either of these stats at 99 just completely destroys the build. If you end up making a God build with tier three Hall of Fame badges, you won't have anything else. Like that's literally it. But this build that you guys are looking at right here, I'm telling you right now, it is going to be extremely, extremely difficult to replicate this current badge count and have anything close to these attributes. Anyway, moving on with the takeovers for this build, like I said earlier, Earlier, this is essentially a play shot that can slash really really well similar to the offensive threat bp build that we saw back in 2k20 so i decided to go with my primary takeover as limitless range and my secondary takeover being easy blow buys honestly i kind of chose this for content as well but honestly whenever this build gets double takeover i promise you it is going to be unstoppable but obviously if you guys prefer to choose a different takeover go right ahead you have a whole range of options oh and by the way since we're here right now i just want to quickly point out that this build being able to get slashing takeovers was only made possible because it has max weight and just like that guys we have our god build the most broken god build for the threes and this is the fun part right here because i have calculated the badge count for each category perfectly so starting with the 16 badge points we have for finishing we can go with bronze masher and gold giant slayer for tier one tier two can be bronze fearless finisher and bronze acrobat and after that since we have had 10 points invested into tier one and tier two we can now go on to tier three. And since we have six points remaining, we can now get two silver badges at tier three. One of those badges being a core badge. So you can make Limitless take off silver a core badge, and then you can also get silver slithery. Shooting, we have a total of 28 badge points. And honestly, the only badges that you need for tier one and tier two are these ones right here. So Hall of Fame got up. I think this is going to be an extremely good badge this year. Hall of Fame amped. Seeing how hard it's going to be to be able to score and move with the ball with the new adrenaline boost system you are going to definitely need this badge silver green machine and after that we still have a total of 14 points remaining for our tier 3 badges and since gold badges at tier 3 are worth seven badge points this is the best part right here because this means that we can actually get three tier 3 badges at gold because one of those badges can become a core badge i probably won't really be using agent 3 that much and put that on limitless range instead but having three tier 3 badges at gold is definitely going to be better than just having one hall of fame badge at tier 3 moving on with playmaking this is what we have we have hall of fame quick first step obviously this is a must silver unpluckable silver the ankle breaker and once again we have three badges at gold and tier three handles for days gold killer combos gold and gold clamp breaker as our core badge and finally for our four defensive badges we can go with off ball pest bronze menace bronze and silver workhorse as our core badge and just like that ladies and gentlemen we have just created a very 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 broken build but like i said it took me hours and hours and hours and hours to be able to find this build and i'm glad that i can share it with you guys this build is going to be unguardable once it's fully maxed out with all its badges and i honestly can't wait to go crazy with it for nba 2k23 anyway very very quickly though since i said earlier that i was also going to show you guys my twos build i am going to show you guys that right now especially to all you twos players out there since this build is going to be for the twos you can go a lot taller so we're gonna go for 6-4 for our height and then 6-4 for our wingspan and then once again for our weight you are going to go with maximum weight 230 pounds and these are going to be the attributes that you guys go with and oh my goodness look at this badge count 15 finishing 25 shooting 23 playmaking and 16 at defense once again i want to stress out to you guys just how hard it is to replicate a badge count like this if you didn't go for max weight but anyway as you guys can see this build gets a 87 driving dunk but also gets an 85 midi 86 three still gets a 90 ball handle 86 speed with ball has very reasonable defense and also have some solid physicals but yeah this is pretty much a slight variation of my threes build that i showed you guys earlier and i will definitely be making this build for day one as well i'm probably going to end up treating this build more like a shot creator so for my primary 
takeover, I went with Paula Precision. And my secondary takeover will be the same as the first build with easy blowbys. But anyway, there you guys have it, man. That is exactly how you break the NBA 2K23 player builder. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And more importantly, I hope you guys found this helpful. 2K23 is about to release. I can't wait to see the builds that people come up with. I feel like this is actually one of the most balanced build systems that we have ever seen in 2K. And hopefully this means that we're gonna see a lot of diversity with everybody's builds, which I definitely think would help make the game more enjoyable, especially in the long term. But anyway, that is it for this video, man. Comment down below your thoughts about this build. Let me know what you guys want to make. Let me know if you guys decide to make the same exact build that I made. Don't forget to drop a like and subscribe if you guys want to see more of my content. And uh, yeah, I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.